Thank you, everyone, for showing up. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, making Cube CTL, Cube Cuddle, Cube Control, whatever you want to call it, PowerShell friendly. Uh, so uh, I'm the Posh Wolf. That's what I go by online. All of my sessions I have in this GitHub repository, that includes the slides, the code, everything. Uh, so don't feel like you have to take pictures, but you can if you want. And I'll pause in case someone wants to snap a picture of that. And I'm sorry it's a little small. I can give you the link afterwards if you need it. Um, the first thing I want to get out of the way is, oh, do you want to go back, back a slide? Back a slide? <laughs> it's all good. All right. First thing I want to get away, how do you guys pronounce Cube? I, I say Cube CDL. Does anyone say Cube Control? Cube CDL? I say Cube Cuddle. I like it. Any other pronunciations? I've heard Cube Control a lot at the conference from some other people. Anything else? OK. There's not a right way to say it. That's just the point here. Anyway, so I'm Anthony Howell. That's my name. Um, I'm from Eugene, Oregon. It's about a six-ish hour train line south for me, which is, which is really comfortable. You don't think of Americans riding trains, but the Amtrak is not bad. Um, so I asked Chibi, Chat GBT what a typical Eugenian person is. Chat GBT doesn't like talking about marijuana, so it skipped that part of Eugene. Uh, but you know, progressive, outdoorsy, creative, friendly, open-minded, mostly accurate, so I left it in there. <laughs> um, I've got three kids, one on the way, so that's where three and a third. Uh, two dogs, wife, and a cat. Uh, been in IT for a while, and I, I intended to update the slide. I haven't actually done anything with you know blog, Twitter, plural site, or consulting the last year. I left links in there. I am, however, employed. They're not paying for me to be here, so I'm not going to mention them. But they're a good employer. So, uh, so instead of that, I want to share a fun fact. So my first summit, I shouldn't have actually made it because my boss waited until the last second to say, oh, hey, by the way, you know too much PowerShell. Why would we send you to a PowerShell conference? Doesn't make sense to me, but it made sense for him for some reason. Um, so I signed up after the deadline, and I sent an email to the, to the organizers. I don't remember who it was back then. It might have been Don Jones. Um, I said, hey, by the way, if you guys have a ticket opens up last minute, I can drive up. I don't have to book travel. I just need to find a hotel, and we're good week or two before the summit, and I still remember this. It was a Sunday afternoon. I was out shopping with the kids at the grocery store. I got the email. We threw everything in the cart. I ran home, and I accepted it <laughs> and made it to my first summit. So, um, And this is a favor for my wife. If someone can snap a picture while I'm up here talking and send it to me, I would appreciate that. So it's just a funny thing that she, she likes. Thank you. Uh, Kevin, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, so you can send it to me on you know, Twitter or you know, whatever. All right, so what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to talk about what the problem is with kubectl and PowerShell. It's not a problem with either of them. It's a problem with them together, OK? Uh, we're going to get into why not crescendo or dash o json. A lot of opinions there I'm going to warn you guys about. Um, uh, we're gonna I'm going to explain what my solution, what it requires, and why I'm doing it in certain ways. And we'll get into the technical stuff, some gotchas. Uh, the, the other technical stuff, so with parsing and then with formats. Uh, and then because when I practice my presentation, it's a little slow or a little short, we're going to get into um, filtering left with kubectl. Because I found that once I was parsing objects, I was using where object way too much. So we're going to get into some of the things that I found with that. All right. So the problem, first of all, kubectl is just standard out, right? That's fine in Bash. But PowerShell, not so much. And also, that's it. Like, that's the only problem, in my opinion, with kubectl. <laughs> Appreciate the clapping. All right, so first off, Crescendo. Is anyone here not familiar with Crescendo? OK, so Crescendo, is a, this is the short version. I've not used it very much. But Crescendo is a module that allows you to use um, JSON to generate a wrapper for an executable. So you would, be, you would look at kubectl. It's an executable. I want to make a wrapper. Let's use Crescendo. Don't, and this is why. So first off, Crescendo is more PowerShell-y. You can get uh, functions that are you know, git dash cube pod, right? You can do that. But what you're doing is you're teaching yourself skills that are not cross-shell compatible, meaning that if you're ever not in PowerShell, 
how do you get pods from kubectl? And that's a bad example because it's just kubectl get pod, right? It's not very complicated. But the, but what's that? Dash. Or yeah, dash a. Yeah, thank you. Um, but the point is, learning a crescendo version of an industry standard tool is a waste of time. Do not do that, right? And my point with this is I wrote a very basic wrapper that had those git, you know, cube pod commands, and then I found myself in a bash shell needing to use kubectl, and I didn't know what to do, okay? That's my opinion, right? It's just your opinion, man. Cool. I guess. What's that? But the kubectl, the, the Kubernetes certificate tests agree with you. If you want to get certified for Kubernetes, go ahead. See, now what I'm going to do, so, so um, what is your name? Joel. Joel. So what Joel is saying is that the getting certified for Kubernetes is also another reason. So what I'm going to do after this is I'm going to edit my slides, add that in there on this page, get certified, learn cube CTL. There we go. Thank you. I didn't even think of that. All right. Um, secondly, the other option, so kubectl has the dash o JSON, right? JSON is a very structured language. We can convert it with one commandlet. But what is the problem here? You guys should be able to see this. How many extra characters do you have to type for this command? So I'm really lazy. I alias kubectl to k, okay? I don't like to type a lot of characters. That's too much typing, in my opinion, okay? Uh, and it's also differently structured data than what you get from kubectl get pod versus kubectl get pod dash o json convert from json. Again, I'm really sorry, guys. That is just my opinion. <laughs> so I watched The Big Lebowski recently, so that stuck with me. Sorry, guys. Um, all right, so <clears throat> my goal with uh, this project was to have kubectl output objects, maintain kubectl syntax, uh, preserve the output formats, but also keep it reliable and efficient. I don't want to do a lot of parsing with it, okay? So what does that look like to you? In summary, I really just want kubectl that outputs objects. Like, that's all I want, right? Please, can we have that natively? Uh, okay, so here we go. This is a teaser. We'll get into how this works. So uh, first line here, this is kubectl get node, right? It looks normal, okay? And this is an AKS cluster. I'm really cheap. I have one node. Don't do that in production. Um, down here, this is using my module. I call it special k. It just was a fun name. Uh, and you notice k git node. It's opinionated. That's how the function is. If you guys would like to rename it in your own versions, feel free to. Um, but you can see here, this is a table. This is a PowerShell object. You don't, there's no format table. I'm not doing anything to it. We'll walk through how to do this. Um, but that allows you to, to do where objects. So where status equals ready. I only have one node, so you know, it's still just the same node. Uh, but that's the idea, right? Okay. Prerequisites. PowerShell 7. I don't like supporting backwards compatible to 5.1, let alone any further back. Funny story, six months ago I did a project that had to support PowerShell v2, and that was miserable. So I don't, I try not to do backwards stuff. Okay. Uh, demo environment here. I've got Windows 10, latest version of VS Code, PowerShell 7.3.4. My module, special K, it's v0.2.1 right now. Um, I've got a, a 0 0.3 beta on my laptop that's not published. I'll get that published soon, um, but we'll, you can wait for the updated version, or I can send it what I'm working on. Uh, also, kubectl, and in my demo environment, I'm using a um, Kubernetes on Docker, so I didn't want to have to worry about um, uh, being able to connect to the Wi-Fi, even though it seems to work great. I just didn't want to worry about that, so. All right, any questions so far? Cool. So parsing. We're going to get into for parsing. So this is what the process that I'm using looks like. And if you guys have feedback or let, you know, hey, that's really dumb. Why are you doing it that way? I'd love to hear it. Um, but first off, um, the headers on kubectl output have a standard minimum width. So we can take advantage of that and use that to um, calculate the indexes of each of the spaces, insert semicolons, and convert from CSV. It's dead simple, OK? Um, and then. To get the table format, we're going to insert formats into it using uh, the ps object of type name dot insert. Show you how that works. Um, and then I've got, well, when we get into the section talking about formats, talk about how I'm auto generating the formats. Because writing PowerShell formats is miserable. Okay, who here has done that in XML by hand? Yeah, it sucks. Okay, um, I did learn 
uh, that there is a, uh, James Brunitz who's got an easy out module for doing this. I haven't looked into it, but supposedly it makes it a lot easier. Uh, okay, so um, let's walk through how the parsing works and then we'll actually look at the code. So here is uh, K, or kubectl get pod, okay? Looks familiar? So what we're doing, we find all the spaces, we add semicolons, we trim them, and then it looks like structured data, right? Convert from CSV. All right. Let's take a look. Uh, all right. So, and I'm working straight out of my sessions repository. So everything you're gonna see here is, is there. It's publicly available. It's in a different branch right now. Um, but just in case you're interested, and this probably needs to be zoomed in. Oh, all right. Oh, I, I brought my, my mouse with me today because my touchpad doesn't always work. All right. All right, is this big enough for folks in the back, or should I zoom it in one more? One more? Okay. We'll go full screen, too. How's that? Good? Okay. Cool. So, well, let's hmm, make sure my, um, uh, my Kubernetes cluster is working. <laughs> I have uh, test output in case it isn't. Okay, cool. All right, so this is, this is straight raw output from kubectl get pod. It sh should be a little bigger down here. But that should look familiar, right? Um, I've just got a couple of Apache pods running in uh, my uh, Docker version. So if we look at what the, that outputs, right, it's an array. Okay, it's nothing special. And specifically, it's an array of strings. You guys all know the get type method, right? If I'm showing something that's new to you and you want me to explain it, let me know and I'll stop. Um, and there's three, there's three lines specifically. Uh, we've got the header line and then the two pods, okay? All right, so this is the test data. All right, so we're specifically, or when I say we, it kind of made me, uh, specifically using the header row uh, to actually calculate. Is this too low down here at the bottom? For these in the back, you could say, okay. Uh, so we're specifically going to use this header row to calculate the indexes of where to insert the semicolons, okay? Um, and here on line 21, this is just straight from the module itself. Um, I'm doing some checking to make sure that it's what we expect. So for example, if one of the commands, um, uh, like, you know, git log, for example, it doesn't have headers, so we're going to avoid that. There is some additional logic that I have in here to, to handle that, and we'll, we'll get into it, but I want to talk about parsing first. And here, line 25, this is the only regular expression I'm using. Space, space, slash, capital S. If you're not familiar with regular expressions, it's literally looking for any two spaces followed by a non-space character. Like I said, there's no fancy regular expressions. It's just one really simple one. Uh, and so if we use select string with the all matches uh, parameter, it's going to find all of them, which is cool. So let's do that. All right, so now M has, and I really like select string in PowerShell 7, by the way, with the, with the highlights. Uh, so we, 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 we found all of those, and if we look at that in a table, we get, this nice, we get this nice idea of all the indexes where we need to insert a delimiter. So in this case, I'm using semicolons. Uh, I started with commas, but uh, if a service has multiple ports, it separates them with commas, and that got some weird output. I haven't seen a reason not to use semicolons yet, but there might be one. All right, lines 33, 30, 33 to 38 here. Uh, we're gonna iterate through that, uh, that array, and we're specifically, uh, for each line, we're gonna sort the indexes descending, because we wanna put the semicolons at the end of the string first, so it doesn't increase the index for the next ones. Does that make sense? So it's one of the good use cases for dash descending. Uh, and we're doing index plus two because it's got the two spaces. Just gonna run that. And now, we have output with semicolons in it. A little bit extra spacing. We're gonna get rid of that here in a second. Uh, all right, and so here on line 45, and we'll get into this in the module, it's, I have some logic to make sure that the input that I expect from the command is subcommand is something that I can actually parse. Um, and so I'm dealing with formats, specifically, 
And so my module is set up to use the argument zero, argument one, so I don't have a param block, so it parses the arguments to the args array, which is intentional. Um, and so I use that to tell the PowerShell formatter which formats to use. So I'm hard coding it here because we don't have the rest of the module uh, to just get pod, because it's output from get pod. And so now, if we take and we, um, oh, I'm sorry, I lied earlier. This is one additional regular expression. We have, uh, using a regex replace, the space plus semicolon, it's replacing all of it. Every time there's a semicolon with at least one space in it, it's replacing all of that with just a semicolon. So this is what it looks like. Okay, now we got CSV structured data. And so I'm gonna pipe that to trim in case there's additional spaces it's missed and convert from CSV. And now, this should look like what we expect um, our output to look like, except that it's not a table. So remember I mentioned that we want to preserve output. So to handle that, you guys have seen output with more than three columns as a table in PowerShell, right? That's, those are done using formats. And so, um, is anybody here not familiar with the, the PS object property? So every PowerShell object has PS object property. It's a hidden property. You can't tab complete it. Frustrates me every time I try to type it. Um, but you can insert a type name into this. And so, if we insert our type name of get pod, I have a format, and we'll get into how I'm, uh, how to write the formats in an automated fashion, and it outputs as a table. And there's nothing fancy in here, this all runs very quickly. Um, I mean, we can, you know, use our human reflexes to calculate, to see if there's much difference between k get pod and kubectl get pod. I mean, it's, I don't know if there was a noticeable delay there. Not for me. Uh, okay, and some of the logic uh, down here, line 55, if it doesn't have, you know, a, a format that I'm ha uh, accounting for here, it just outputs it without adding a format in it. That's all it does. So in that case, it just falls back to a list. All right, any questions? Cool. All right, so the whole thing is, uh, is, a to is not, is, you know, 40 lines. This is not a complicated, uh, not a complicated function. So you notice I've got function k, no param block, um, and specifically so I get the arguments in that args array. Um, and also, and we'll get into this with the formats, um, I've got a JSON file where I've got all the commands and subcommands that are currently supported by the formatter in special K, uh, and I have to import this for some of the logic to work, uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, and I have some commands that don't have output, so, uh, you know, exec, copy, scale, rollout, delete, logs, it's probably additional ones. I haven't had the time to go through every single command in kubectl, uh, but it's on, it's, on the, um, it's on the schedule at some point. And so if it's one of those commands, because it's the args array, I can simply call kubectl with that args array, and it works, okay? So, I mean, we don't want to try to uh, format, you know, kubectl uh, exec or whatnot. So that's what that does. Um, and if there's additional ones that you're aware of, let me know, I'll add them. Um, and otherwise, we're going to capture that output. Um, and the James Brundage that calls this command interception, I think that's what his words were for it. And he said he does it in one of his modules, so we have to unite on what we call it. So we're calling that command interception. And then the rest of this is stuff we've already seen. You know, we're going we're gonna to look for those headers that we expect uh, and, then, and then format it. And then down at the bottom, oops, we're actually building, getting that type name from the the um, you know command subcommand so uh, get pod or uh, uh, config get context that kind of thing. Any questions on that? Cool. All right, so one of the things that I found, I want to run through some gotchas with this. So in this case, it formats all the objects as strings or all the properties as strings. And I don't have a good solution for this, so I want to walk through what the, some of the gotchas are. So pods. So we've got some pods here, and um, the first time I tested this, my restart property was all zero, so it looked like an integer, and of course now it's two with 41 minutes ago in parentheses. Uh, so this isn't gonna make as much sense as I hoped. <laughs> so imagine one of these columns was an integer, okay? Um, however, it only looks like an integer, they're all strings. Um, and we can look at, another, another good example is uh, top, so, uh, you know, top pod that's gonna give us uh, CPU memory information if you have a metrics server running. Um, 
and it would be great if I could say, you know, top pod where, you know, CPU is greater than, you know, X. And, but, you know, it's, again, it's strings. Uh, and so what we can do is we can get into how strings or uh, integers that are strings are compared in PowerShell, but it gets really wonky. Uh, so for instance, uh, we can say where restarts is less than two, and it gets us none of, the, well actually it's because I updated this earlier from, uh, let's, let's try three. So I think this one, yeah, so that one, that one works. Um, so I, I have, I wanna very specifically point out, this is an integer and restarts is a string, and so, and this is, I don't have a good explanation for this because I just, just discovered this like a week ago, how this string stuff works. I was like, yeah. So I'm just talking about this because it's really interesting. Uh, but equals, I should say equals two. This one obviously won't work, even though those are two restarts. Um, so there's some ways we can get around that. Oh, and in, in top. So these are both greater than, greater than 20. So I'm doing memory bytes greater than 20. 20 is an integer. 21 mi is a, a string, but that one works. If that was 200 something, actually let's try that. Greater than two, or we'll say greater than three, I don't think this one will work. So string 21 is not greater than integer three. What about greater than 200? Greater than 200? That's, that's a good idea, let's try that. That does work. And I think it's because it's comparing, you know, the, the two to two, the zero to one, and then the zero to m, yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Well, okay. <laughs> so, so the comment is it's normal. And yes, it is normal because it's strings. You shouldn't compare strings to integers. I guess that's probably the moral. Yes, yes. So there are some ways around that. So if, for instance, you want to get like uh, your pods that have the most memory, you have the dash dash sort by memory in kubectl. I've got some other um, filter, filter left options. And why did that, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I even did this, had this problem when I um, was testing earlier. I was supposed to import k.ps1 and I didn't do that. All right, let's try that again. There we go. Uh, so you have a sort by memory and you can select the highest memory. So it does, um, it sorts by descending by default. And you can do the same thing with sort by uh, CPU with ktop uh, node. And it's the same thing, it's highest to lowest. Um, and then another example, so we're talking strings and integers. Um, let's get into um, uh, time spans and, in and integers. So, excuse me, uh, the last scene column, oh, I got a lot of events here, looks like a time span, right? Seven days, 13 hours. And it'd be really cool to have, you know, a custom class that the two string method showed seven days, 13 hours, so you, and in the back end, so you could compare them, and they were actually time spans. Um, I, haven't, I haven't gotten into trying that, not sure what kind of performance impact that would have, but just a thought. Uh, so for example, um, if we do, you know, we compare this to dates, it doesn't work. Surprise, surprise, right? Um, so we're comparing the last scene to greater than 45 minutes ago, but, you know, Seven days, 13 hours is not in the last four to five minutes. All right. And we can say less than 45, and you notice we were talking about the strings. 142 is less than 45 as a string. No. I feel like you guys are getting this a lot faster than I expected, so this is good. Um, but you can get creative if you really need to do this uh, with where object. So for instance, if you want to find all the, um, events in the last 45 minutes, you can say, you know, where it ends in a 45, the last scene is less than 45. However, if the minutes go above a certain, you know, 100, and if, if the minutes is 100 minutes, then this would obviously fail. But that's why you should filter left with kubectl, and I'll get into this some more. Um, you have the sort by time spammed, and then you can, uh, you know, select the last five, so the most recent. There we go. Now I'm seeing the most recent events. So the moral of the story is don't compare strings to integers, strings to date times, strings to anything that's not a string, and um, uh, use some of the sort by stuff. Yeah, question. So the question is, have I considered uh, converting the string to something that could be compared to um, an integer or something? Um, and, and the answer is uh, yes. Um, 
it's, and that's something I want to test uh, to see if see if it if it doesn't have a very big performance impact because it I mean this is really just a time span right uh, so there's no reason we couldn't have a custom class that is a time span that this two string method still shows exactly the same as QCDL and then we compare it to other time spans but I, I'm not sure what the performance impact is but it's something I'm going to try. <laughs> yeah, and, and if, if we go back to, you know, the original four requirements, this meets the requirements. The requirement wasn't to be able to, you know, filter with where objects. That wasn't one of the requirements, so. Anyway, uh, so something else I found that, that you guys might appreciate. So here, so I'm in PowerShell 7 out 3 to 4 right here. String 0 is greater than negative 1 in PowerShell 7 out 3 to 4. Uh, PowerShell, Windows PowerShell, string zero is not greater than negative one. So there are some differences between PowerShell 7 and PowerShell 5 on comparing strings and integers, which you shouldn't be doing anyway, right? It's just, I, I, I saw this and I was, I was a little surprised, so cool. But this uh, string zero is greater than one, or sorry, is less than one in both cases. So, just be aware that there are some weird, weird things happen when you compare strings to non-strings, okay? Moral of the gotchas section. Okay. Uh, okay, so I think, yeah, the rest is, okay, we're not gonna get back to the slides for a while, cool. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk about formats. So, uh, let me save this, okay. So in handling formats uh, for Special K, what I'm doing is I have a JSON file where I write out all of the command, subcommand combinations that generate uh, something that, that can actually be parsed. So sort as JSON, pretty simple. So, you know, K get pod, you know, K top pod, K config get context, et cetera. And so what I'm doing with that um, is two things. So in, um, and I mentioned this, in uh, the actual function itself, uh, here on line three, I'm importing that, that file so that I don't accidentally try to apply a format to an object that doesn't have one. But I'm also have a script that reads that, and these are all scrolled to the bottom because I was practicing this morning, uh, a script that reads that and then uses that to write formats. So here's how I'm doing that. So I've, I'm importing it, and we're not gonna run it right now because it takes a little bit. Um, so I'm, actually we can take a look at that object. So I'm importing it, and now I have commands, which is as a hash table, because I like hash tables, so we you know, the same stuff we saw in JSON. Um, and for each command, and then for each subcommand, I'm going to, line 15, I'm gonna use uh, K to tell me what properties that object has. So it's kind of a circular dependency. So I use this during the build phase of my module. So it builds, and by build, I mean, you know, put it all into PSM1, you know, just PowerShell build, right? Um, and it imports the module, and then it runs through all the commands, so it has to have a cluster that it talks to to be able to regenerate formats, but it does have a flag to reuse formats. And then it uses, for each of, for the first object, it will look at the psobject.properties.name. You guys are all familiar with psobject, again. So it has, you know, a property called properties, uh, which has all of the properties on that object, and we can look at name. So this gives me an array of all the properties that object has. kubectl output is all tables. So it's all the same formats, they're just different property names, right? So with that, and because I hate running these things by hand, or here, let's get rid of this, I've just written out an array of strings. We're here, like line 28, I'm, replacing the name with the command dash subcommand. So get dash pod, for example. Uh, line 30, so view selected by, and I am by no means a format expert, but I know this is telling PowerShell to select this view by the name of the object type. So remember how we're, I was inserting the object type into the, the, uh, the object itself? So that's how it gets selected. And then for each of, the, for each of those properties, I'm adding the, the table column header item, and it's just using, you know, string replaces. Same thing here with table column item property names. 
that's it. You don't have to know a lot about formats to know how this works, right? We don't want to replace things in strings. Cool. And at the bottom, we're taking all of that, we're compiling it into an actual, um, uh, I always forget the, the extension, whatever the format file is called. And we will look at one of those here. All right. So, that's, that's what we expect, right? Get pod, get pod, column names. Pretty straightforward. Does that make sense, everybody? Cool. Question, yeah. So the question is, dash o wide adds extra columns. Dash n namespace or dash dash all namespaces also adds extra columns. Does this handle that? The answer, we're gonna go a little off script here. Um, the answer is, oh, whoops, where are we going? Oh, here we go. Uh, oh, I, th I thought I had this up, sorry guys. So the answer is, I submitted a couple of these issues this morning. So, yeah, that's something I found, and I, I anticipated someone might answer, ask a question about it, so thank you for doing that. Um, so, yes, I have an idea for how to handle that. It's not currently handled, um, but the intention is to, to, to handle that, because it's really easy to say, you know, does args contain dash O, and then does the next index wide, right? It's not difficult, it's just not implemented. Cool. Any other questions? Okay. But, yeah. This is why you don't write these by hand, right? And that's, I guess that's, not, that's only, you know, 220 lines, it's not bad, but. Okay. So, oh, how are we doing on time? Oh, just fine, just fine. Okay, so this is, um, so one of the things, as a PowerShell person, oh, nice. I intended to have all this minimized to look cool. Uh, so as a PowerShell person, when I get objects, I like to do where object, right? Um, and so with kubectl, I found that I was doing that way too much after I did this, um, uh, specifically when I was writing a, uh, a CICD pipe in Bash, and I had to do some nice filtering with kubectl. I had no idea how to do it. Um, and so I, I made the decision then I needed to learn how to do more filtering left. So I want to walk through some of those examples. Um, if they're not already familiar, and talk about some advantages of kubectl and some advantages of where object, because there are cases where where object um, it's a lot easier than what you can do with kubectl. Uh, so for instance, you know, kget pod, right? We get this with nice output. We want to find all the running pods. There's only two running. Um, oh, sorry, sometimes I hit F8 and 7 at the same time, apparently. Uh, we can say where status equals running. We get the expected output. However, the problem here is kget pod, if you've got, maybe your cluster's having problems, you have thousands of evicted pods, I've been there, um, kget pod takes a while to get all that data, and then, and then you're filtering it down to just the few you have running. Filter left, right? So you can use the dash dash field selector equals status.phase equals running. And this only shows us the running pods, which is the same as before, but we're having kubectl do it. But remember, special case mantra is it's the same syntax. So we can take that same exact thing and run it with special K, and it works. You now have skills in PowerShell and kubectl. I mean, that, that's the whole idea here. Um, and also because I hate writing help, so the help for special K is literally the kubectl help that's already written for me. <laughs> All right, uh, so we can do the same thing with you know, status does not equal running. Great, don't get anything. Of kubectl, you know, status does not equal running. No resource source is found in the default namespace. Um, uh, and I think this one's one that actually errors because I don't handle the, I don't handle that output yet. So I think it's an error. One of the things that's gonna, going to improve. So yes, you can run that with special K, but what it should show is that no resource is found in the default namespace without the error, but it errors, so. All right. Uh, oh, so, a fun fact. How did I know that that was status.phase? I mean, because in the kubectl output, it's just uh, status, right? Yeah, it's just, it's just status. Like, how did I know that was status.phase? This is something that's gonna be a while to figure out, so. If we look at the JSON output, so I'm gonna do kgetpod-o JSON, convert from JSON, and that gives me an items array, which I'm going to 
set to the pods variable here. So if we look at that, it's gonna be array of the pods from the JSON object. There's a lot of data here, so if you need more data, use dash o JSON, pipe it to convert from JSON. But it has a status property, and I'm looking specifically at the first pod, so pod zero, and inside, here, let me make this a little bigger. Inside of the status, oh, I, and let's, just, let's just run that again. Inside of the status property, we have a phase property. So it's status.phase equals running. So it's using um, the JSON path in the field selector. So, and we'll get into an example where that doesn't work. Not all um, resources support filtering by all uh, properties. I'll show you an example where it doesn't work. You get some nice output, so it's really easy to understand. So again, set the phase running. All right. Uh, so here's a fun one: getting pods uh, by app. So if you give it the label, you know, app equals. Um, there's not really a good way to do this with special K and where object. Um, I mean, if you if you have the app name and the pod name, I mean, maybe but that's even not a given. I'm just using that as a, my, my kind of example. Um, use the dash L, which is you know, dash dash selector. So we can say app equals, and then the app name, in this case, Apache. And again, does this work in special K? Why, yes, it does. So we can do dash L, app equals Apache. Cool. And we can also do uh, namespaces. So I mentioned namespaces, uh, not yet supported, but um, we can, you know, we can get pods that are in the cube system namespace. Great. Looks like some of them are rebooting a lot. Oh well, it's in Docker. Don't care. Um, and again, we can do this with special K, um, but you'll notice. Um, okay. Wow. Well, sorry. Special K. Where, where's the namespace column? It's not there because the format's telling it not to output that. So it's not supported yet, but it will be. It's not, it's not difficult to support, it's just not implemented. Um, another thing that I found that was really easy uh, using PowerShell instead of Bash is what if you need to return in a Bash script just, and I'm not a Bash expert, by the way. If you ask me to write awk or grep without the help or without a stack overflow, I can't do it. Um, but if you need, if you're in, a, in have a case where you need to get the specific, the, just the name as a string of a specific pod, um, with special K we have we have an array and we have property names, so I can I can, you know, get all of my pods for my my Apache app and get just the first one in a name, and then I can do something with that value, maybe you know, exec a command on it or something. In PowerShell, that's really easy. I just get a string for the name of the of the pod. How do you do that in Bash? Um, you do that, well, let me rephrase that. How do you do that with just kubectl? I don't have Bash locally, sorry. Um, so we have the same thing, so dash l, app equals Apache, we're using the field selector again, status the phase equals running. But then, with dash o, we have this option to use JSON path, and so you can tell it what properties to output. Uh, so this is, um, is it, is it JQ, that's the notation for JQ, I think, uh, uh, JSON query. Um, so what this is gonna do is it's only gonna output the names of the pods, uh, but it does it in kind of a weird format that you wouldn't expect as a PowerShell user. I wouldn't either. Uh, and so, just one of the examples where I feel like PowerShell's a little better. And generally speaking, I feel like PowerShell's just a little better by default, but we're not biased or anything at the PowerShell Summit. <laughs> All right, couple, couple examples with nodes. Um, so one of the things I found with, with nodes um, is you have this column called status, the status ready. What I found is there's not a way to use cubes to be able to filter on that. But we can do that with where objects. So I'm doing it here. The only, the only solution I found uses some uh, version of awk and grep that I didn't understand, so I didn't want to try to explain it to you guys when I didn't understand it, so just wanted to mention that one. And then with services. This is another example I found where we can use PowerShell to filter by the cluster IP. So I can say where you know, the service is equal to a specific IP address, you know, it's cluster IP down here. And yes, that's still just a string, but in this case I'm comparing it to a string, so that's okay. Uh, but if we look 
at the, uh, so the JSON output of services, let me do this here, oh, well, it's actually, we'll do this whole way. So it's services.spec.cluster IP. It's an IP address. It's that same 10.96.0.1. But if I try to do kubectl get service field selector equals spec.cluster IP equals the IP address, we get this nice error that says that spec.cluster IP is not a known field selector, only metadata.name or metadata.namespace. So there are some limitations to uh, filtering with, with kubectl. Cool. So, I hope I've convinced you that this solution to learning kubectl and keeping it PowerShell friendly is good. Uh, and, if, and if anyone here is interested, um, this is the, oops, this is a repository where I've got it. Uh, it's all open source. It's available on the PowerShell gallery. I'll have an updated version here. Not one that yet supports in dash wider namespaces, uh, but I have an updated version here that has some additional outputs supported. Uh, I publish here soon. And if you guys want to want to you know fork it, submit a PR, please do. It's it's really not a complicated module, and for me, I found it really useful, uh, especially since you know it, it uh, has that opinionated K alias instead of kubectl. Uh, but that's all I got. Any any questions? Yes. Okay. How are you handling errors? Uh, I let let's look at it. So that's where. And you, you, don't, you notice the one error where there's no resources in the default namespace? Right. That one wasn't handled. However, what I have implemented now is, uh, oh, sorry, wrong file. Let me actually grab the k.ps1. Uh, so, so here, we're getting, we're getting the output, right? Add equals kubectl ours. And if this output matches the, this string, so the, the headers that I expect from the objects that I'm aware of, then we do stuff with it. Otherwise, we just output out. So you don't output the tree to like an error tree or, or to a single tree? You caught me. I had someone else mention that. Yes, I don't do that yet. Uh, so um, uh, to do that, I have to uh, use the commandment bindings and to be able to you know, throw the error and stuff. Um, but yes, I'm going to explore doing that. And you know, that's what I love about coming to the summit is people think about things that I would never have thought of. So I have a huge list of things I'm going to do to this in the next couple of weeks. Well, I did something similar with another thing. Like, like, like the urine sample. Great. I would love that. Yeah. And I think, I, did I, I think I forgot to mention the question for the recording. The question was, how do you handle errors? So, sorry, guys. Anyone that's watching this from home, I'm sorry. Any other questions? I think I saw another hand, maybe. All right. Oh. Good, only two minutes early. So, thank you everybody, I appreciate it.